prayer. Amen. Amen. We're in God's presence in this place. Your Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come into your presence. God, we want to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. God, we want to worship you, Lord, for you are worthy of the praise today. Heavenly Father, God, we ask today, God, for you to move and work in this service, touch lives. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for it, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many, how many of you this morning are thankful for a testimony? Amen. <laughs> Amen. The testimony of where God has brought you from. Amen. Amen. I'm not the same person that I used to be, but the Lord changed me. Yes. He pulled me out of the miry clay. Yes. Amen. He pulled me out of all the junk that I was in. He set me apart. He set me free. Amen. I've got a testimony today. Praise God. Yeah. I'm thankful for the Lord today. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We need to remember Sister Ruth Cooper and Sister Ruby Krennic. We need to remember Michael Jeffrey. Amen. We also need to continue to pray for uh, Lorena Mangia. Amen. And the Lord will do a complete healing there. Yes. Amen. We pray for Adam and Amanda. Amen. There's a lot of needs this morning. Amen. But we serve a God that is able to touch every single one of them. Amen. We, there's, there's not one thing that you go through in your life that God is not able to intervene and move in that situation. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord Jesus, to come into your presence. God, as we have entered into your courts this morning, God, with praise. God, we make our petitions known unto you, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we pray for Sister Ruth Cooper. God, we pray for Ruby Krennic, God. These elders, Lord, we pray for them. We ask, God, for you to move in their lives, for you to help them, God. Give them strength in their body, O oh God. Lord, we pray for Michael Jeffrey, Lord. Jesus, where he is at right now, God, I pray for you to move upon him. Lord Jesus, we pray for Lorena Mangia, God. God Almighty, we pray for a divine healing. God, a moving of your spirit in her life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for Adam and Amanda, God. God, we call their names out to you today and ask for you to move and touch in their lives. Oh, God, we thank you for it. Jesus, you are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Then, God, we trust in you today. Jesus, we thank you for it, and we worship you in the name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, let it be done today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Whenever you seal your prayer in the name of Jesus, you are calling upon a sacrifice. Amen. In other words, these words that I speak are not words from me, but it's calling upon a sacrifice that's still got power today to do what needs to be done in every situation. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You can receive it this morning. We'd like to say that we're so honored to have uh, Lorena's family with us in service this morning. Amen. So honored that you're with us today. And we're so honored to have Brother Powell. Uh, he's going to be ministering to us in a little bit. Amen. Amen. But we're so thankful that he is here with us today. Amen. Now we're going to ask our ushers to come this morning. Man, I appreciate these good young men. We, uh, a little update on the rally that we took the kids to. We ended up taking 10 kiddos. <laughs> Ten kids to the rally, and uh, I did realize something that I'm getting too old. <laughs> oh man! I was I began to feel about ten thirty at night driving back with the van load of screaming kids. I began to feel my age, and uh, as a young man came there, and so hey man, well, we're thankful we had great results. Hey, amen. Many of our young people, they got touched by the Lord, and God moved upon them, and so we're just so thankful for that. Let's pray to the Lord Jesus. We thank you, God. God, for this opportunity, Lord, to give unto you. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, for you to bless this tithe and this offering as we give it unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give us unto the Lord. Amen. Sister Emily has a few announcements. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, the Lord. I'm sorry. Y'all forgive. <clears throat> 
pass down this morning. All right, so what we've got going on for February this coming Friday is Royal Rangers at 6 p.m. And then um, I have another announcement. I'm going to do this again. It's going to take me a couple minutes, so I'll go through these. Um, next Sunday, which is February 6th, um, we are having a ladies' meeting after service. And then Saturday, February 19th, is Men's Fellowship at 7. And all night prayer is going to be Friday, February 25th. And then, of course, Ladies Conference is coming up in March, the 24th to the 26th. Um, if you are planning on going to that, please let me know. Um, and then Men's Conference is going to be in April. So these are things that you want to go ahead if you need to ask off time from, from work or whatever you need to do to plan for it. Um, make sure you're working on that. Um, the other notes that I need to make today, we are going to kick off this year with a Valentine's fundraiser for um, the youth in Sunday school. Um, we will start selling as of today through Wednesday, February 9th. That is the cutoff, so it's about a week and a half to sell. Um, what we are doing, I brought these to show y'all. We are going to be selling brownie hearts. They're in a little tin. They look like this. These are my trial ones. I have a few with me if you want to take them with you to show people. When you're selling, I don't have a lot. I think I have like seven with me. But um, this is what they're going to look like. Um, but they're not going to be just packaged like that. I'm going to, I'm working on some ideas, but I'm going to try to package them really nice. We're going to put a to from tag on there. So if it's a gift for somebody, they can write who it's to and who it's from. Um, and probably coupled with a thank you card from the church for supporting the church. Um, I do have, if I run out of samples and to take, if you want to take a picture of it so that you can show um, the people that you're selling to what it looks like, I can also send you one out on our church thread um, for y'all to save on your phone. Um, that's perfectly fine because I know I've only got a few. We do have the forms for you to get. I have a hundred of them today. If you take a few, you run out, and you have access to a copy machine or something, feel free to make other copies. But we are going to be starting this as of today. So um, I can put these in the foyer for y'all to grab. Um, that way you can get as many as you want or need. But um, I'm hoping that this is something a little new, but I'm hoping that this will be a good jump start to the year for fundraisers um, for our young people um, and for our Sunday school department. So we are going to be starting to do that. If you have questions about it or anything, feel free to ask me. Amen. 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 If you haven't had one of Sister Emily's brownies, <laughs> she's kind of famous for them. Amen. But she does. Um, I, I know she was planning on getting with some of the ladies to see if they would be interested in helping her uh, make these brownies. And she'll... You'll learn a lot. She'll tr show you her tricks and then to where they come out perfect every time. And so, so we're very thankful for Sister Emily and what she is doing. Um, the, the young people are raising money to uh, go to Peak. This year, Peak is going to be in Houston, Texas. And so we want to take our young people there. And that just kind of makes it to where... Mommy, mom and dads don't have to come up with the money to send their kids. We'll let the kids raise their money and, and with Sister Emily's help and the help of some of the ladies in the church helping her, uh, we could get these made and get these uh, sold and I believe they're going for $3 each. But it's a nice little nice little thing and it's really good. I, I, I took one yesterday. <laughs> And she came in, she said, who stole one of my brownies? <laughs> and I was like, well, I didn't realize it was stealing, <laughs> but I got one, and they were very delicious. And so um, if, if, if you uh, please, please invest yourself in, amen, in the kingdom of God and in these young people. Amen. amen. Praise God.
Amen. We have another announcement that we do need to make. Uh, this evening at 5 p.m., we are having a baby shower up here at the church uh, for Landon and Colby Tabor. Sister Rachel Rodriguez, Sister Rachel, would you raise your hand? And Sister Rachel Rodriguez, she is handling the, the, the baby shower. If you uh, have any questions, you can get with her. But we hope for everybody that can attend to attend. Um, Landon's going to be there, so I'm going to be there. And, and well, we need some other guys to be there as well with Landon. And uh, anyways, we just wanted, this is a young, young couple. And they're just starting off in life, and they, they need a little help. Uh, so we want to try to uh, throw them a baby shower to kind of help them get started. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Let's worship the Lord today.
Hallelujah. There is power in that name. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Without any further ado, we're going to ask Brother Powell to come. He's going to minister the word to us. Everybody say, Lord bless Brother Powell. Lord bless Brother Powell. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. We hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand off from the Lord. Hallelujah. We are honored, Lord Jesus, to be in your presence today. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. What a privilege to be in Belton, Texas with you fine folk this morning. And I feel the wonderful presence of God in this house. Amen. The Lord is with us. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen, amen. The Lord is with us today. Yes. yes. And I am grateful for every blessing that he sends my way, allows me to be a partaker of. Thank you, Pastor Ratliff and seniors, church family. Thank you for being here today. Amen. Aren't you glad you know Jesus? Yes. yes. Jesus is the common denominator among us. Because our paths crossed with Jesus. Amen. Now our paths have crossed today. Yes. Because of the goodness of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to read from the word of the Lord. Turn your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And uh, read this particular setting of scripture written by the Apostle Paul to the church. And he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your word today. Thank you for this assembly. Thank Thank you, Lord, for every family, every home represented here. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit would say to the church. Guide us according to your divine purpose. Bless, I pray, every family, every individual in Jesus' name. In the church, said, amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Again, I am grateful for the invitation to minister here in this wonderful church family. The title of our message today, today will be simply promoting Jesus. Amen. Just simply promoting Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. And that is what... I want to do today. Promoting is defined as furthering the progress of something, especially a cause. Support or actively encourage. Promoting, advancing the cause. Yes. And so you have chose to be in this house today. Yes. You arrived, you had some time of worship and prayer and praise, and I trust that you have focused on the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful morning we have 
in this part of Texas this morning. Yes, sir. I was delighted. I rise early most every day this morning, rising early, just a little bit before the sunrise and not really knowing exactly how the weather is going to be and not that the weather is going to control who we are and what we do, but it is a beautiful morning and I'm very grateful to be in the house of the Lord Amen. on this Lord's day with a beautiful coolness outside, sunshine and clear skies Amen. and the presence of God in this house. Amen. We have been led to the throne of grace by these singers and musicians and Amen. There should be a praise on our lips. Yes, there yeah. should be some gratefulness and gratitude in our hearts that says, Thank you, Lord, for giving me one more day that I can come to your house and lift up my voice, lift up my hands, clap my hands, and rejoice in knowing who you are and what you've done for yes. me in my life. Amen. God's been good to us, has he not? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, sir. My story begins with my father. My father came out of a world where alcohol had a major part of their living and existence. My grandfather uh, grew up in hard times back in the uh, era of uh, some very hard times in America. And I thank God for my heritage and the work ethic that has been instilled in our family and in our lives. And uh, through the process of time, uh, my, my grandfather had an accident uh, working for the railroad. And in those days, of course, the early 1900s, late 1800s, there were not a lot of compensation to be obtained from any accident. I think he got a small uh, something that we would even laugh at, maybe $50 as a payout for his uh, accident, having some of his foot cut off by a rail car that uh, rolled across his foot. And so uh, imposed upon my father being the oldest of, the oldest boy of 10 children. He had two older sisters. And so my grandfather had to impose upon my dad to, uh, drop out of school at the at the sixth grade and uh, start helping to farm and raise. The cash crop was cotton and then to get vegetable gardens, etc., uh, for the family to survive. Uh, some of you are senior citizens. You may know a little bit about what I'm talking about in years gone by. Uh, the economy was not as good as it is today. Uh, a lot of our ancestors had to dig their living out of the earth, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. They lived on the meager uh, substance that they could raise and or forge out of uh, the earth. And so for a number of years, my dad farmed and they had 28 acres that they farmed with horses and mules. And then when he would get his work done, he would be hired out to the neighbors to plow their crops for 50 cents a day. And uh, that 50 cents would go to my grandfather for the provisions of the family, etc., etc. So 1934 rolled around, Brush Arbors began to pop up, and no Brush Arbor meeting in Camp 8, Louisiana. My grandmother and my dad's two older sisters gone to the Brush Arbor, and there they're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they come back excited. Uh, they begin to talk to the rest of the family. My dad, uh, somewhere around 21 years old now, uh, not interested in the apostolic movement or Brush Arbor meetings, but uh, his sisters begin to tell him, well, do you remember and begin to name off some girls that was in his class when he left in the sixth grade? And he said, well, yeah, I remember that, those girls. And they said, well, they've grown up to beautiful young ladies. And there, some of them are attending the Brush Arbor meeting. And so he said, well, I guess I'll go and see the beautiful young ladies. 
And so he went in July of 1934, and the story is that he was standing in the shadows. The old brush arbors did not accommodate a, a, a lot of comfortable seating as you and I have today in a nice atmosphere such as a church house. But the old brush arbor meetings were just poles stuck in the ground with a few poles across the top and some brush on the top and at night they lit their coal oil lanterns, etc., etc. And so on this particular night, hot summer night, my father is standing out in the shadows listening to singing in the preached word of God. And something stirred in the depths of his soul. And the second night he went back and he was listening and he told me, he said, Son, I could not believe the fervency of, of the man of God as he preached the word of the Lord. And something got a hold to me. He said, I could not stop myself. I found myself at an old altar. And it was just an old log that had been hewn in half and put, uh, set on other little pieces of wood that were cut and sawdust uh, for a floor over the earth. And he said, I found myself kneeling and praying and crying out to the Lord at an old-fashioned altar in the sawdust. And God gloriously filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it made all the difference in the world for his life and for his family. Amen. And I stand here today because of that induction of my father. No, I did not inherit his salvation experience. I had my very own for myself when I was 11 years old at an altar of repentance. There God gloriously filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I'm glad to tell you today, it's for you and for your children and their children too. Amen. And to as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that somebody told you about Jesus? Amen. Amen. And so our job in this generation of which we live is promoting the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are commissioned to advance yeah. the cause of Jesus Christ. My hat goes off to our elder pastor here today coming here a number of years ago and instituting the work of God and starting a church. And now you are blessed your family is blessed. Your home is blessed because you've got a witness in Belton, Texas of what Jesus Christ has done and can do and will continue to do yes. as He is exalted and glorified and magnified yes. in your family and in your lives. Amen. 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 On the road of life, you'll see many folk and some of them will agree and some of them will not agree. Some of them will be believers and some of them will not be believers. But I've got a word from the scripture for you this morning in Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. The scripture says, as Paul writes, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Verse 4, God forbid. Right. Yea, let God be true. Yes. But every man a liar as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Could I say, my friend, to you that you are blessed as a believer of what Jesus Christ has done in your life. Yes. And no one could tell my dad that nothing happened to him at his altar of repentance and in his conversion experience. And no one could tell me that nothing happened to me at my altar experience and in my conversion. And no one can tell you that it didn't happen to you. Right. Because when you have been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, yes. when you have a personal experience in Jesus Christ, yes. my friend, then you know that you know. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. That he yes. is made the difference or has made the difference yes. in your life. Amen. Amen. We understand that in Jesus Christ uh, there is all the fullness of uh, of uh, the Godhead bodily. Uh, yeah. So we don't have to get hung up on uh, men's philosophy of the Trinitarian doctrine and, and uh, all of the uh, religiosity that the world will try to impose upon us. Uh, for the Word of God says that in Him, that is in Jesus Christ, uh, dwelleth all the fullness uh, of the Godhead bodily and you are complete. Yes. In Him, Amen. which is the head of all principality yes. and power. We are complete. Everybody said complete. complete. We are complete in Him. Yes. This is, my friend, an amazing effect. Yes. You are complete in Him. Yes. Amen. This can only be true because Jesus Christ is the Almighty God, yes. robed yes. in flesh. He, my friend, is everything that we have need of. We don't have to pray to a son. We don't have to pray to a spirit. We don't have to pray to the Father. We just do it all in the name of Jesus. For it's all inclusive. In Him we live, and in Him we move, and in Him we have our very being. Amen. Yes. Notice that the Apostle Paul is writing here and he says, uh, this is a beautiful fact to be enjoyed, not just a status to be achieved, but we, my friend, are complete in, or we are made full Amen. in God Almighty through the name of Jesus Christ. It's all the fullness of God that dwells in Jesus Christ. And yes. as Believers, we are united in Him by our faith. Praise God. For without faith, it is impossible to please, to please Him. That's right. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, yes. and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. I thank yes. God today for the privilege that we have. Yes. To seek after the Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes, sir. Multitudes of people on the face of this earth. Yes. Amen. Billions of people, my friend, around this world. Yes. And you and I are privileged to walk in the doors of an apostolic church yes. where the glory of God has been saying about where we have collectively and corporately prayed in the righteous name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we arise to the occasion today because Jesus has made the difference yes. in our lives. Yes. You are here today because Jesus has made the difference yes. in your life. And yes, my friend, that is something to celebrate. Yes. Yes. That is something to tell your friends yes, about. Sir. That is something to sow the seeds of righteousness in your community for. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because this, my friend, is the design, purpose, and will of God that this church would grow and flourish yeah. and be a lighthouse. I was praying this morning and I prayed for this church and I said, God, let it continue being a lighthouse yeah. in this area, in this city for the glory of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I believe Amen. that you are on the path for greater things. Yes, I believe in that. Jesus' name. Yes. Greater things. Yes, sir. You have loved ones. You have family members. You have co-workers. You have neighbors. You have acquaintances, and they know that there is a difference in your life. Yes, sir. Amen. They see that there is a difference in your life. Yes. Many, many times. On the road of life at various and, and uh, places where I've gone. I've been in Walmart. I've been in HEB. I've been in Kroger's. I've been at the post office. I've been at the convenience store getting gas. And somebody walks up and says, 
There's something about you that's different. And I will smile at them and I will tell them, yes, there is. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm a born again believer in the liberating power of Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been buried in the name of Jesus and I've been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Just a little simple explanation. Amen. Will cause a hunger and a thirst in the hearts of others. And you can be an influence. Yes. For the glory of God. Amen. And the cause of Christ. Amen. Amen. We just come through a beautiful season of the year where we celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ. And you know what? I'm quite happy about the fact that we do that every year. Yeah. Closing out the year, we celebrate the beautiful birth of Jesus Christ. We call it the Christmas season. And uh, I realize that the uh, economy gets boosted uh, and I realize that families get together and sometimes uh, the uh, actual uh, reason is never mentioned. But as the church, we need to celebrate the fact yeah. that we can yeah. announce again to the world that Jesus Christ was born Amen. of the Virgin Mary. And I still believe the Word of God is factual. It is the history that gives us the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I believe it happened just like the Bible says. Amen. I believe that the Virgin Mary was talked to by the angel. And the angel told her that she was blessed and highly favored of God. Right. And that she was going to bring forth a son. Yeah. That his name would be Jesus. Yes. The sad scenario in the religious world that we're living in. There is an alarming percentage of the religious world that says statistics. I was studying some last night, and I'm not going to try to number a statistic, but it's an alarming amount of people in this world that we're living in that they teach that Jesus was just a mythical character. <laughs> that he never was a real baby born of the Virgin Mary. Oh, right. That he never really grew up and uh, was found of his mother and dad in, in the temple among the wise there. Uh, that, he, that he did not die. The sad scenario of some in the religious world is that Jesus didn't die and go to a cross for our salvation. So my friend, with that in mind, it behooves me, it, it presses me, it gives me a force behind me to tell you uh, that's a lie yeah. from the pits of hell uh, and that's exactly what the devil uh, your adversary uh, would love you to think uh, but I'm here to declare to you uh, that Jesus Christ uh, is alive uh, and well uh, and Amen. he did die yeah. he did go to the grave Hallelujah. but he did Hallelujah. from that grave uh, and he is victorious uh, over death uh, hell uh, and the grave and I'm Amen. here today to promote Jesus. Yes. Right. yes. Because he's the best thing yes, he Amen. that has ever happened right. in my life. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. I am a born again believer. That's right. Yes. And I've commissioned myself and been sent and ordained as an elder to advance the cause of Christ like no other. I'm not a Coca-Cola salesman this morning telling you it's the real thing, although I will tell you Jesus is yes. the real thing. Yes. Amen. I didn't come to tell you about Dr. Pepper at 10, 2, and 4, but I come to tell you Jesus is still on the throne. Yeah. I come to tell you that your faithful walk with Him uh, will impact you, your life uh, and your family's life uh, and the world wherein you live. Yes. yes. 
Yes, it Amen. will. Amen. There is nothing in all of this world like the infilling of of the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, that is purified and cleansed uh, a sin-sick soul, uh, the power of God that can take uh, His blood and wash a black heart yes. yeah. right. and make it white as snow. Somebody say amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And uh, as you have uh, collectively made this church uh, uh, be what it is and as it will grow and go forward new, new life not only ourselves being renewed yeah. I need renewing in yes, Christ yes, and you also need renewing in yes, Christ but yes, we then need to reach out there and get a new person and let them become a new baby in Christ right. because uh, that, my friend, is where the life is uh, of the church. Yes, amen. Most of us in this house have experienced being parents. Yes. And if you not, if you have not, then I sure, I'm sure you anticipate that time. I remember uh, my wife and I previously... Uh, uh, she's already gone on to her eternal reward, but I remember when we got married in 1978, and uh, about five years later, uh, she was expecting our first child, and that baby boy was born into our family. We had prepared for months, months we prepared for that coming of that child. Man. New room, new furniture, new clothes. Things are going to shift and things are going to change. Uh, sleeping schedules <laughs> change. The entire operation shifts to accommodate uh, that new baby. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. That, my friend, is the thrust of the church. We've got to shift our thinking to accommodate uh, revival that God wants to bring uh, into Belton, Texas. Uh, and He wants to do it through you uh, and through your family. Uh, he wants to re regenerate your spiritual uh, uh, birth and your awakening to Him. Amen. And He wants you to be a parent right. in the right. kingdom of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. For His glory. For Amen. His glory. That, my friend, is how the family of God grows. New life must come into the body. Yes, amen. Amen. I commend you for, I think you said, 23 years of ministry here. And that's a beautiful thing. I am looking across here at two beautiful acres of land that right. God has beautifully and graciously allowed you all to possess. And, and the future goes forward. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, let's go forward. Let's go forward. Right. Amen. Amen. For the glory of God, the church must go forward. Amen. And so Amen. with anticipation and with excitement, I challenge you to arise to the occasion. Amen. And put your hand in the back of the leadership of this church and say, I'm with you in prayer. I'm with you in giving. I'm in, I'm in favor of, of you and I'm believing with you that God is going to do the work among us. Amen. Come on, put your hands to the Lord today. Let's believe the Lord to do great things in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Christ in His earthly ministry impacted His world. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, and verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, for he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree to see Jesus. Yes. For he was coming by that way. And when Jesus came to the place, 
Amen. He looked up and he saw him. He saw Zacchaeus. And Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. Yes. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Yes. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, the crowds around murmured, saying, that he has gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Right. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this, today, may I say to you that the interest of Jesus Christ as he impacted his world was not to uh, the perfect religious folk of that day. But he came for those that desired to see him. Yes, amen. I can't help but understand and, and uh, realize what's going on in this particular setting of scripture. And Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry has gained some notoriety, if you please. Or they've heard about him and some of the things that he's been doing in his earthly ministry. No doubt this particular man by the name of Zacchaeus has heard of Jesus Christ also and it spurred an interest in his spirit and he heard that there was that day particularly that he was coming and maybe he went to where the crowd was. But he was short, the Bible says, of statue and could not see over the crowd and the people's heads. Right. And so he became innovative and he said, I'll go and I'll get myself a position where I can right. yeah. see him. Mm -hmm. And in his quest or hunger or desire to see Jesus, something transpired in the heart of Jesus Christ also. Yes. And may I say to you, my friend, if you are a little bit inquisitive of what's going on in the kingdom of God, and if you're a little bit inquisitive to know a little bit of what I've testified about my Father's experience in the Holy Ghost, mine, your neighbors, your friends, or someone else, your pastor has a testimony of his beginning, amen, his new birth experience. All of us that are filled with the Holy Ghost have that experience in Jesus. Amen. And if there's just a little bit, uh, uh, an array or a ray of hope within your spirit uh, that says, I've wallowed in the pits of sin long enough. I'm thirsty for something different uh, than what this world has to offer me. I've tried uh, things in the world and they've not satisfied me. I've done some drugs and they, they weren't the answer. Uh, it only gave me a momentary gratification or satisfaction, uh, but there's still something uh, that longs down deep uh, in my heart. Yes. That, that connects yes. with Jesus. Yes. That connects with Jesus. Yes. And the crowd was coming along and he was walking down that path and that street or however that particular setting was. But when he got to where, when he got to where Zacchaeus had positioned himself, there he stopped for one man who was kind of scorned by the crowds of mm -hmm. people yeah. and all those around him yeah. because he was a publican and very wealthy man yeah. and uh, no doubt tax collector, da 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 yeah. But he stopped, Jesus stopped and he spoke to him. And Jesus came to the place. He looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Yes. So I'm asking someone in this house today, is there interest in taking Jesus home with you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Is there interest in taking Jesus home with you? If 
you've pressed your way, you prepared yourself, you've uh, took your shower, washed your face, uh, you dressed yourself, you ate your breakfast, uh, you put gas in your vehicle and you made your way to the house of God, you made an uh, effort uh, and God Almighty sees that effort uh, that you have made uh, and that longing within your spirit, uh, that longing within your soul uh, testifies uh, to the God of glory. Uh, he didn't, uh, I want you to notice uh, that Zacchaeus never opened his mouth uh, to scream out at, at Jesus, uh, but there was a divine connection, uh, and I feel uh, that in this house today, uh, there's a divine connection. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He wants you to know that he is interested in you. Yes, he, is. he wants you to know that he wants you to make haste yes. and come to him. Yeah. Because he wants to go home yes. with you today. Yes. Yes. Amen. And when they saw it, the crowd saw it, they murmured. Verse 8, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Hear it. Behold, Lord. Amen. You talk about conviction. It's already set into that man's life. He said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I will give to the poor. And I have, and if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore to him fourfold. That, my friend, is what the Lord's presence will do in your life. It will want you to start getting yourself together and getting things right between your hope, your soul, and the God of glory. Amen. 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 I'm going to do what's right, Jesus. Yeah. Yes. I may not know every everything that needs to be done. He said, but I'm already ready yeah. to give half my goods to the poor. Yes. Yeah. And I'm already ready that if anybody's got a false, false accusation against me, I'm going to restore whatever he says fourfold. Yes. Yes. Zacchaeus became a promoter an advancer of the cause of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to him, this day yeah. is salvation. Come, Come to, your house. to this house. Yes. Yes. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham, Jesus said, verse number 10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Yes. I'm here today to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you yes. better and more powerfully than anybody in the face of this earth will ever love you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he, he loves you. Yeah, he, does. <clears throat> he gave his life. He gave his life. Yes. yes, I do believe in the authenticity of the Word of God. Yes, I've studied in the universities. And yes, I, I have taken courses uh, where evolution was taught. Uh, and I've had many students go to the university uh, where evolution was taught. And they came to me and said, Pastor, our uh, advisor, how do you wait? I said, get a grade, get out of there, and forget about it. Uh, because this old book uh, called the Holy Word of God is the truth. Uh, and it is forever settled. Uh, and Amen. The book says that God created the heavens and the earth, yeah. and God said, "Amen." Yes, sir. Man, right. God right. is wanting to create something in your life today. Yes, sir. Amen. He's wanting to create something yes. in your life today, but He's looking for someone that will step out and say, "Lord, I desire to see you. I desire to see you." like I've never seen you before. Amen. There was a woman at a well recorded of in John chapter 4, verse 5. Jesus had said to his disciples, I must go through Samaria, Samaria, which is called Shachar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was the sixth hour, and there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy some food. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, 
Being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me a drink, thou wouldest have asked of me, and I would have given you living water. Yes. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh this, of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Amen. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of living water. A well of water springing up into yep. everlasting right, life. Amen. Yes. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come here to draw. And Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou said, Well, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that thou that in that saidest thou truly, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Verse 20, our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe the hour cometh. When you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. Yeah. They that worship him must worship him in spirit to and in truth, and the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called the Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I that speak unto thee am he. If you're looking for your answer today, you don't have to look any further than the good word of God and the testimony of the righteous, amen, that declares the whole counsel of God, amen. It is time for us, my friend, to declare Jesus made the difference in my life. Verse 27, upon this came the disciples and marveled that he was talking to a woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou? Or why talkest thou to her? The woman then left her water pot. And she went her way into the city and said to the men of the city, Come, see a man. Right. Come, see a man. Yep. This woman at the well, the woman of Samaria, I don't record anywhere, recall anywhere that her name is given except the woman at the well, the woman of Samaria. Yeah. But she became a promoter yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you may feel insignificant today. You may feel so inferior. But if you're a child of God, you can be a promoter of the cause of Jesus Christ. You can be one that shares the good news of Jesus Christ and say, yes, I still believe. I still believe. Come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ. Yes. yes, my friend, the cause of Jesus Christ. The advancement of the kingdom is on the shoulders of the church. Thank God for ministry. 
Thank God for pastors, prophets, uh, evangelists, teachers. Uh, amen. Thank God for apostles uh, and all the fivefold ministry of, of the church. Uh, but my friend, uh, thank God for the saints. And first of all, I'm called to be a saint of God before I shoulder any greater responsibility to accomplish anything as a minister of the gospel. I'm called to be a saint of God. And therefore, I must perpetuate the cause of Christ on the face of the earth. And I would say to you, come and see a man. Amen. Yes. Come on to church, my neighbors. Yeah. Come on, my loved ones. Come on, Belton, Texas. Yeah. And see a man. Yes. He can tell us everything that yes. we've ever done. And he is the forgiver of our sins. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. The church is the divine institution ordained of God. divine institution ordained of God it is not a particular person or a one small group of people but it is uh, a, a body of believers collectively in Texas in Louisiana in Arkansas in New Mexico and a uh, great uh, United States of America and around this world there's yep. a church yes amen, amen. 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 Thank God for the church. Can you say amen? Or, amen. Are you amen. glad? Are you glad that you know who Jesus is today? Are you glad that you've got a testimony of what the Lord has done for you? Can you say amen? Amen. 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 And so our mission today, as I close this simple little message, is to be those that would promote the cause of of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. I promote yes. Jesus. Yes. Amen. I Amen. promote yes. Jesus. Amen. Would you stand with me? Amen. I'd like to have Sister come with just a little group music in the background. Praise Amen. God. Thank you. I'm so grateful Thank for you, the privilege Jesus. of coming here today and speaking Thank to you, you in this house. You, and I'm so grateful for what the Thank Lord has done. My father was a minister of the gospel for 57 years after his conversion experience. Pastored a number of churches in the state of Louisiana. Pastored one time in Texas years ago and, and went out of this world amen, with his hands lifted up glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. He pastored until six weeks of his death where he declared the whole counsel of God. I'm telling somebody today, your world can be changed Amen. Amen. when you come and see yes. who Jesus is. Amen. Who Jesus is. Thank Amen. Jesus. I have been blessed now. Thank you, Lord. Endeavoring to serve the Lord. 55 years from my personal experience at 11 years old, 66 years old, amen, and still declaring Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior, preaching the gospel for over 45 years. I thank God for my heritage, but today I feel a quickening of the Spirit. Today I feel an urgency to tell you it's time for us to come together. It's time for us to pursue it's time for us to allow the hunger for God to drive us into the unity of the body of Christ God. and tell somebody else, Jesus loves you. Yes. Amen. Jesus loves Thank you. you Jesus loves you. Yes. Thank you Lord. Promoting Jesus. Praise. Promoting Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Millions of dollars are made around this world by men and ladies that are working in the career of advertising. Advertising pays millions of dollars in that market. Today, you can become a promoter of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the dividends, the payment, or the blessings of God in this world. But the plan after this world is 
far greater than anything that this world could ever Amen. offer you. Amen. My Bible tells me that there's streets of gold, Amen. walls of jasper, gates of pearl, yes. river of life, mansions prepared yes. for the believer. church for a moment and, and, and come. Amen. He, he's here today. He has come to where you're at to let you know that He has your best interest. He has your best interest. Hallelujah, Lord. He has you, ma'am, sir, today. He has your best interest. He has your Best interest, heart. Thanks, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you. In sincerity and yeah. all honesty, God, I just come you, because I feel that connection. Hallelujah. I feel something that has inspired me to be where I'm at this very moment. Hallelujah. I come, Lord. Hallelujah. I come because I'm compelled. I made an effort to climb my sycamore tree. I just wanted to see. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Jesus Christ will not leave you disappointed. Hallelujah. He will come to where you're at. Hallelujah, Lord. Today, He will come to where you are. Reach out to Him. Reach out to Him. Reach out to Him, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yes, Lord, my God. Thank you. Yeah, the Lord, the Oh, how did he do? Breathe in this house, Holy Spirit, God. Yeah, the Lord. Breathe in this house, Holy Spirit. Oh, Breathe the Lord. 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 Breathe
Hallelujah. 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 I want to be a promoter of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're promoting something. You're promoting something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You say, well, I'm not promoting anything. You're promoting something. You're promoting carnality. You're promoting flesh. You're promoting the ways of the world. But the higher calling today is to promote Jesus. Because he's the one that can change your life. Amen. Amen. He knows exactly where you're at. Yes. He knows what you've been struggling with. And when you connect up with him, he can change your life. Amen. 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 Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come into your presence. Jesus. God, we ask, God, for you to have your way in every life here today. God, don't let this experience.